if you're looking for something that is just entry level, you're a beginner that don't know if DMR is going to be for you because there's a lot of modes that aren't, you can use the 168. It is great. I still have yet to find anything I don't like about it. But if you're going to be one of the ones that are uh, mountain bikers or uh, first responders, sky warrant operators, folks that go out for the uh, community SAR operators, I know that we have them here in Oklahoma. I don't know if Larry has them over in Arkansas, but I know they're out on the West Coast as well. But that's when I would go to the 878 portability, still have the APRS function. And you have to where you can do the SMS texting off of both 168 and the 878. But if I'm going to need for just sheer raw power to make the trip into the machine, hands down, go to the mobile. Get the 578, get your turbo power, a solid 50 watts out, that is going to make the trip. And if you are uh, techy enough and want to do some the ISS work, you can do it off the 578 as well. Just make sure you drop down to low power. And the one thing to remember with the radios is they are what you make of them. So if you don't want to take the time to learn your equipment, that's where frustration comes in. And with the 878, the 578, we've already got the courses up with every radio that we sell. They do come with BridgeCom University. So the one thing we don't have on there is the new satellite feature that was added to the firmware. So that is something that isn't in the university yet. Uh, Once I have time to actually learn that feature, that'll be something I can make the video on. You hadn't done that yet? Yeah, um, (laughs) you know why. I'm still working on the 168 videos. (laughs) I played with it. Um, Heard a lot of of traffic. It's just my antenna uh, that I had built. Built the tape measure antenna. Just really... I didn't have it tuned all the way solid on the two frequencies. So do a little bit of homework, get those uh, tape measures cut where I need them. And I'm going to try it again. Um, I do have an application that tells me where the ISS is at any time, day or night. And uh, next time it's over my area that I've got that tape measure fixed, I may go out there and see if I can't uh, do some contact with them. Now, one thing that Alan brought up, was the 168 is a good choice, but still have to invest in a hotspot unless you live near a repeater. That's where the plug and play packages come in. So what is a plug and play package? With the 878, it is a done for you solution that you don't have to worry about programming in the Brandmeister network uh, talk groups into the radio. And we program in your DMR ID, your call sign, and your information to log on to Brandmeister Network. Now, with the new plug-and-play packages that we're selling, if you send us the information for TGIF Network, we have the talk groups for TGIF and Brandmeister both in the Duo Max code plug. The Duo Max code plug is not a standalone code plug, and that is something that we are still talking about on if and when that's going to become a standalone code plug because we want to make sure that people are able to use everything efficiently. So with the plug and play package, the 878 plug and play package, you get the radio, you get the SkyBridge Max, you get the programming for both for DMR, Just to be clear, we don't program in the local analog repeaters because there are so many variables. If the repeater information isn't correct from the source that you're getting it and we program it and then it doesn't work, you're going to be looking at us scratching your head going, well, you programmed it. Why is it not working? Or the thing that I I, I, I don't miss hearing is, hey, I bought a plug and play. It plugged. It ain't playing. Yeah. And the biggest thing that I can say when it comes to the plug and play package is shutting down the SkyBridge is vitally important. Yes. The correct yes, way. Yes. Because if you unplug the power 
while you're on a talk group and it's writing that log file to the card and you do that one too many times, you're just basically taking a marker and it, drawing across the page and corrupting the data that it reads. And then you wonder why it's stuck on initializing. Yep. And that is one of the things that is the most common issue I see is people have unplugged the SkyBridge without going to the dashboard screen and clicking power and then shut down and waiting the 30 seconds to unplug it. Because you got to remember, the SkyBridge is a mini computer that has a multi-mode digital voice modem attached to it. And if it's not properly shut down, it's like yanking the power cable out of your uh, desktop computer while you're in the middle of copying files to the hard drive. Do that enough times, and Windows is going to be like, hey, um, you know what you were trying to do? Yeah, I can't do that anymore because I don't know where these files are. And then you're on the phone with Geek Squad or Dell or HP going, yeah, um, I need you guys to fix this because I have a warranty. And they're going, well, what happened before it did this? So that is one of the key things with the hotspots. And this goes for any Pi-Star or WPSD-based hotspot is shutting it down correctly. It doesn't matter if it's Pi-Star, if it's WPSD. If you don't shut it down correctly and just a little bit of data gets corrupted from not shutting it down correctly, you get stuck on the boot screen or the initializing screen because the operating system can't boot up. And the screen is waiting for data from the operating system to feed through the M MMDVM board to the screen because that's how the screens are connected is the MMDVM board. So that data channel gets corrupted and... Dan, when you're shutting down your hotspot, just to be clear, with the sky bridges, it doesn't completely shut down the way that you might think it does. It doesn't turn off like a computer. What it does is it stops the operating system and says, okay, full stop, don't write any more data to the card, don't do anything else. Just go to the stop screen and it should say MMDVM stopped on your SkyBridge. Uh, if you're not seeing that message, there may be some corruption that's already happened. Dan, if it's staying on a usable talk group, then it may not be getting the shutdown command from the software. And that means something's probably happened with the software and probably need to re-image the card. And I actually have a PDF file that has pictures in it as well as instructions step by step on how to redo that and we can set up a remote session where you know you just act as my hands i log into your computer and we can take and re-image that card too as long as you've got the micro sd card reader that's well, not a problem that's, that's the thing that might i'm not saying it will but i would definitely give it a try is updating the uh, software yes um I had, I had trouble with mine um not connecting it wouldn't hear my radio, wouldn't hear anything I had. Went in and noticed in the upper right-hand corner, it said, update available. I clicked on it, let it run its update, and hey, the, everything was right in the world again. I could talk. So I would try that. Yeah, that's actually a very good step is if it gets stuck and it's, you know, some weird behavior, a couple of things you can try is, one, clicking the update available to run the update. Two, if your host files got corrupted, go to admin on the dashboard on WPSD. Once you're on the admin uh, panel, you'll see there's an option for advanced. And if you click advanced, there'll be a whole line that comes up. And one of those options is tools. If you mouse over tools, you'll see update host files. Click update host files, and that will re-download the host files and reset those to make sure that they're correct. So if any data got scrambled in the host files that is causing this odd behavior, and this works for the SkyBridge, the latest version of the Zoom spot, um, as well as a couple of other hotspots that are now using WPSD to update those host files. So if any odd behavior that's caused by a corrupted host file gets sorted out, and then you just need to reboot the unit using the reboot command on the power tab. 
Using that power button and that feature will save you a lot of heartache and misery and headache. 